All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're talking about underwatering fig trees. And please, if you guys have been benefiting from this information, especially when it comes to watering fig trees, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button for me right now. I also went really far out of my way. I put together an article for you guys that I published on my blog. It took me a long time. I wrote up all the things that you might see when you have an underwatered fig tree, when you have an overwatered fig tree, the differences between the two, how to correct an underwatered fig tree, uh, bringing an underwatered fig tree back to life, how much water fig trees need, um, exactly how much water, even how to set up an irrigation system that like the one I use here for all of my potted fig trees or in-ground fig trees that you guys should be using at home. So there's really no excuse. At the end of this video, if you're confused about anything, go in the description, there's a guide there that has so much information in it and is a nice companion to this video. So I think the main message here of underwatering fig trees is that you don't want it to happen. Um, and I find that it happens a lot during the summer because that's of course when it is the warmest. And a lot of you guys go away on vacation. A lot of you guys don't know and don't realize that you have to water these fig trees, especially when they're in containers, every single day when the temperatures are over 80, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, especially if it gets even warmer and especially in this spot here where I have these fig trees, these are all the late varieties I have. And I purposely put all the late ones here because they get a ton of sun. They get sun from sun up to sun down all day. It's also on blacktop. So the heat is radiating up <laughs> throughout the day, throughout the night. This garage is a furnace. So this is the perfect spot for your fig tree. You want to give it that heat. You want to give it that sunlight. But if you guys are not watering them every day, this can be the worst thing for it. In fact, that lack of water is going to immediately stop them from growing their figs. The figs will fall off the tree. The leaves will start to droop. In fact, all of the leaves will start to droop. If your fig looks really, really sad, all of them, I mean, not just the top few leaves, because sometimes the, the trees will play a little bit of a trick on you and you'll see a few of the leaves on the tree starting to droop. That's just humidity shock, especially if it's the top few leaves on the branches. They haven't had a time to adjust, unfortunately, to that stress of a lower humidity. Typically here in the Philadelphia area, it's so humid. So all of a sudden, if it goes down to 20% humidity or 25, 30% humidity, the trees will start to droop, but only on the leaves that haven't adjusted to that shock period. The way that you know though that it is actually being underwatered is if the whole tree starts to droop. That's a surefire way. Also you'll start to see yellowing leaves at that point. And what you'll end up seeing actually if you do miss a water and you do have this problem, on this tree here, this is the one tree in this plot that got hit the most, you end up seeing some damage. Because the leaves will be in such high amounts of stress that the tree will then droop all of its leaves, but then when you water it, it'll, it'll perk right back up. But if the damage is so severe, this is called leaf scorch. And so leaf scorch is when there's a lot of temperatures, higher temperatures, excuse me, lots of sunlight, lots of heat, combined with that lack of water, the leaves then perk right back up, but the damage was already done and you can't correct it. This tree here, in fact, I thought was going to fruit. <laughs> it didn't really fruit. There is a couple of fruits actually right here. Maybe it will get some by the end of the year. You can see that really small fig there. But generally, if you're going to stop watering it, the fruits will fall off. And again, the leave, the fruits, even if they're on the tree, will either stop in their progression, they'll fall off. And if you lose enough leaves or if enough of your leaves take damage like this, you then inhibit your tree's ability to photosynthesize, gather energy, and this is just terrible. And of course, the figs, even if there is some on the tree, will taste worse. They won't have as much sugar content. Uh, and generally, you're going to have a lot of problems. You need to have a certain amount of leaves support the fruits on your tree. So if you're left with a bunch of fruit on your tree and you don't really have the leaves anymore, like this tree lost probably close to maybe 10 leaves at this point, maybe even more than that. If you lose that amount of leaves, it's gonna be really difficult to support 
the fruits that are already on there if they haven't already dropped off. What you'll also find, and uh, you can definitely find that certainly the figs will start to start to shrivel as well. They'll become like very soft. Even though they're green and hard, they're meant to be, uh, they're unripe and they meant to be hard and green, you'll start to feel them and they'll start to feel a bit spongy. And if that happens to a certain point, like this leaf here, those figs in themselves will take damage. And when they actually ripen, maybe a month, two months later, they'll ripen in a way that is not correct, that has a problem and they won't taste good, they'll partially ripen, they'll have problems. Uh, and so I have a, you know, this tree here is an example. Luckily, none of the fruits are, were that far advanced when this tree took some damage. But if they were, a lot of the fruits even on the tree may not ripen. Even if I got it back and recovered it, the leaves all perked back up, um, it still would probably have a problem months from now when they actually ripen. So underwatering clearly has a lot of negatives to it. The one difference I would say with overwatering, and the way you know it's not overwatering, let's say, is if your tree is happy and healthy and lush and green and it's growing and it has fruits on it, it's almost impossible to overwater it. It's pretty much impossible. Now, figs don't need a lot of water, right? That's the, that's the stance because they're a desert plant, right? They are actually one of the most drought tolerant plants and you can grow them in very drought like conditions and still have them fruit. But if, even if you have them in really drought like conditions like the desert, you still have to be on top of watering them. You think people in Arizona don't water their fig trees? Maybe at a certain point, once they become so mature and established, but getting to that point takes a lot of time. You think people in the Middle East and the desert aren't watering their fig trees? Oh, well, they're in the desert. It's a desert like plant. It's a Mediterranean plant. Fig trees need water to really produce well and to produce consistently. The more water you give them also, the bigger typically your fruits are going to be. Now I've always cautioned against that. You don't want to overwater them in the sense that if you give them too much, well then the fruits actually aren't going to taste as good. So with people like myself, we have excess water where our fig trees are planted in the ground, well then you know, that's a totally different story than growing them in the ground, growing them in pots. So in the ground, when they're not established, like these young ones here, I've just planted about 12 of them on this property against the garage, super, super warm environment right here. I gotta be on top of watering these trees. If I'm not, they're not gonna get established. They're not gonna grow. Look how much mulch is on top of these trees. There's at least two inches of mulch on every single tree here. But those are young trees. So we need to pay attention to what the circumstances are. We can't just say ones and zeros, all or nothing, black or white, fig trees need water or don't need water. Everyone has a different situation and that's my point. So containers, in-ground trees, the size of your tree, the climate in which you live in, these are all really important factors for determining if your tree needs water or doesn't need water and how much to water. Generally in containers, I say you gotta water them every day, no matter really where you live, if it's over 80, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You wanna give them about a fourth of a gallon of water every day, start with that per five gallons of soil, work your way up to a half a gallon. You may even need to go to a gallon. You may even need to water them three or four times a day. As long as it's giving you that full gallon of water. The more frequent you are, the cooler the soil can be, uh, the less stressed your tree will be, the better off you are. If you have an in-ground fig that's young, well, you're gonna wanna give it a lot of water until it gets established. If you have a drought like we're having here in the Philadelphia area, the same thing, you wanna give it more water. Generally here though, as I was kinda of getting to my point a little bit ago, we have so much rain here in the Philadelphia area in normal years that I don't need to water my fig trees and I really haven't watered a lot of them once they've gotten at least a year of growth under their belt. In that second and third year, maybe you need a little bit here and there, it can certainly help. If you're in this as a business, you're a commercial orchard, you're gonna to wanna to add that irrigation every year uh, and water them and make sure that at these times where we have this drought, you're, have, you're covering that problem. But for the average everyday home grower, 
after that first year in humid places, 25 inches of rain annually or more, you don't really have to give them a whole lot of water. You just have to give them mulch. You don't want any weeds. You don't want any grass. You don't want any competition. You want to make sure that your fig tree, if you're not going to water it, has none of those things. You got to mulch it. The more mulch, the better. And then lastly, what I would highly recommend is getting yourself an irrigation system. I was surprised how many of you guys don't have one. If you're gonna go away on vacation, you have a potted fig, I don't even, if, or if you just have one tree, don't rely on your neighbor, don't rely on your kid, don't rely on your dog. I don't know anyone's dog that waters fig trees, but don't rely on something to make sure, even yourself, to make sure that you're gonna water these fig trees every day. Get yourself an automatic, a battery operated, automatic irrigation timer that will automatically water your fig trees for you and give them the exact amount of water that you say. I have all the links to these parts to set up a drip irrigation system on my Amazon storefront. That link is always in the description of all my videos. We got a pressure regulator here that connects into the main hose bid. First, it's depressurized to allow my drip irrigation to work. Got to go down to at least 25, 35. And then we've got the irrigation timer. Then we have the fitting. Then we have the irrigation line. This main irrigation line then goes all the way down. And then it connects into separate lines. These are 1 8 inch lines. So 1 8 of an inch. You got to get a hole punch. You punch it in the main line. Stick the 1 8 inch line in there. And then at the other end of the line is something called a spot spitter. These are the blue ones. They're 12.6 gallons per hour. That's the flow rate. You stick it there in the pot and you just walk away. You program your irrigation timer to give it as much water as you say, as often as you say, at what time. And you can figure out the fourth of a gallon, half of a gallon thing mathematically because you know how much the flow rate is on these spot spitters. Again, all this, all this information, all these pieces here on my website and the article in the, in the description, and also you can find all the links to the stuff as well in the description on my Amazon storefront. So I would not be able to grow these fig trees without this, and I wouldn't grow all these potted fig trees without it. It would be too much work. I would have to come out here every day and spend 30 minutes here in this property, <laughs> probably an hour on the other property I have, uh, just watering potted fig trees. You can't, it just doesn't make sense. Even if you had one, I'm telling you, it's worth it. It maybe would be an, an upfront cost of setup, but it just makes this so simple and easy that you don't even have to think about watering. I don't even think about it. You guys are so concerned with it. I feel bad for you in a way. I want you guys to succeed and have happy, productive fig trees. Uh, but if you're worrying about things like fertilizer and things like water, these are the two things I never concern myself with. We've done the video on the fertilizer. We just did the video here on the watering. Um, if you get those two things very simple and easy corrected, then you can focus on really the other things that matter, like pruning, like staking, training the trees, Harvesting and protecting your fruit is a, a major, uh, major thing. And then, of course, enjoying it. So that was this video here, guys, on underwatering them. Please, if you have more questions, let me know down in the comments. I'll help you out. Also, you can go on my vlog, like I mentioned as well. Check out some of those links on the Amazon storefront. See you guys for the next one, all right? Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button for me if you haven't. Take care, guys.